This video will demonstrate how to configure the scheduler for failure notifications. As a summary, the following will be performed. Configuring the SMTP settings. Configuring the scheduler to send failure notifications. And configuring the scheduler to include or exclude the stack traces as an attachment with the notifications. The following materials are recommended for reading. In the JASPER Report Survey Administrator Guide, Section 8.11.2. In the JASPER Report Server Security Guide, Section 3.7. And the Community Wiki document on how to configure the JASPER Report Server to send emails via the Gmail account. To be able to successfully demonstrate this, I have already allocated email addresses to two user accounts. The users are under the Manage Users section and I have allocated Jasper Admin an email address of admscheduler at gmail.com. Jasper Admin is the administrator of Organization 1 and hence he has the role underscore administrator as well as the role underscore user. Joe user is a normal user who only has role underscore user and he has an email address of joeuser005 at gmail.com. These two users will be used for scheduling notifications. In order for the scheduler to successfully send out any notifications, whether they are successful notifications or failure notifications, the SMTP settings must be configured. There are two configuration files that must be edited. These files reside under the web-inf directory of the Jasper report server. The main file is the js.quartz.properties and the section of concern is the report dot scheduler dot mail parameters. Here the SMTP settings must be inputted with the SMTP host and the um, sender's email address as well as the sender's account, Gmail account, username and password. I've also specified the protocol as SMTPS with a port of 465. The second file to change is the application context dash report dash scheduling.xml. Within this file, there is a bean report scheduler mail sender which contains two property keys the mail.smtp.send partial and the mail.smtp.auth. Because we have set the SMTP protocol as SMTPS, we have to replace these two property keys with the SMTPS equivalent. The mail.smtps.auth is for authentication and the mail.smtps.send partial when set to true is to send the notification irrespective of whether the email addresses are invalid or not. If they are invalid, a send failed exception message will be sent back to the sender. Within this file, there is another section which is relevant to the configuring of the scheduler notifications. This is the Quartz Scheduler Bean, and within this bean, there are three entry keys that we should be aware of. The Disable Sending Alert to Administrators and the Disable Sending Alert to Owner both have default values set to false. These are configurable. If you do not want to send any notifications to the administrators, then you just have to set it to true. Likewise, if you do not, do not want to send any notifications to the owner, then you set it to true. The entry key above it is the administrator role entry key, which has a default value of role underscore administrator. So with this default value, 
notifications will be sent to all administrators within the same organization because these administrators have role underscore administrator as a role. The three settings here are detailed further in the administrator guide. The final configuration that I would like to go into details is to configure the scheduler to include or exclude stack traces along with the notifications. In order to do that, there is a file that must be edited. The file name is applicationcontacts-security.xml and the section is all the way at the bottom of the file with the B name of Exception Output Manager. Within this section, there are entry keys, error underscore UID, stack trace and message entry keys. The default values for these entry keys are as shown here. So if we want a user, for example Joe user, to schedule a report with a failure notification that includes a stack trace, we then add an entry into the stack trace entry key. And the entry is the role underscore user role, which is assigned to Joe user and any other users with this role. And also the message would mean that the Fallop notification would include a more descriptive error message along with it. So I'll add role underscore user to that as well. As you can see here, role underscore user is already included under the error underscore UID. It means that the Fallop notifications message will include an error underscore UID code and this code can be linked back into the Jasper server log file where there is an equivalent error underscore UID. Likewise, role underscore administrator can also be added to any of these entries for administrators of the organization. And of course, if you want to remove or hide the stack trace, then you just have to remove uh, these entries from the list. We will now save the file and restart the application server. Then we will run the test under the Joe user account. After restarting the application server, we log on to the Jasper report server as Joe user, who has a role underscore user role assigned. As Joe user, I will schedule the report of the care plan report. In order to do that, right click on the care plan report and click on schedule. Then click on the create schedule button and go to the parameters tab and either select or input in an invalid parameter to cause the report to fail. In this case, I will go to the output options tab and I'll deselect Apple to report repository because it's not necessary for this test. Then I'll go to the notifications tab and I will input in some email addresses. I'll input in the third party external user at gmail.com which is a valid address and I will also input in an invalid email address. Then I will populate the subject and I'll select send failure notification with a failure message. Then I'll need to ensure I select include stack trace and click on save. Then I will refresh the list and wait for it to disappear from the list. Now that it has finished, 
as the entry is, has disappeared. I will now log into Gmail um, as the sender's mailbox. Now that the schedule has completed successfully, I will now log into the SMTP sender's mailbox account in Gmail. Remember that the SMTP sender was configured as admscheduler at gmail.com within the configuration file. So we log into the mailbox account and we get a sent mail and we check on the sent messages. And as you can see here, the from admscheduler at gmail.com address comes from the SMTP settings and the recipients are Joe user, an invalid email address, Jasper admin's email address, as well as the third party external user email address that we manually entered in. So all the valid email addresses should receive the same message and the, for the invalid email address, a failure message will be returned back to the sender. And this is the message that's been returned. To clarify further, I have set Jasper Admin's email address to be the same as the SMTP sender's email address. So basically, Jasper Admin is sharing the same mailbox as the SMTP sender and hence we get a test value notification being sent to the ADM schedule at gmail.com. You may want to have the SMTP sender's mail address to be different to a user of Jaspersoft, such as an email address of a mail server administrator. Also, whether the notification will be sent to Joe user or Jasper admin depends on the entry keys disable sending alert to owner and disable sending alert to admin setting. The default is false, but if these settings were changed to true, then Joe user and Jasper admin will not receive these notifications or any other users with role underscore administrator. For verification, if we quickly check on the mailboxes of Joe user and third party external user, we can see that the message has been successfully received with a stack trace being included as the attachment. This concludes my demonstration. Thank you for watching.